Day. I'm Suhanna Marchand. American elections can be ticklish times for Canadian governments. They have to think ahead, some to the possibility of a change in power. This time, whoever wins the presidency on November 4th, there will be a new administration. We know that. And that presents challenges. It also presents chances. We have two people in Washington to talk about just that. John Ibbotson is correspondent for The Globe and Mail. Chris Sands is a senior fellow with the Hudson Institute. Welcome to both of you, gentlemen. John, I want to start with you and your column yesterday. You suggested the new U.S. administration provides a perfect opportunity for our prime minister to do something big when it comes to our relationship with the U.S. What do you mean by big? Well, um, I think there's a very good chance that uh, Barack Obama will be, uh, become president. And Obama has worryingly said that he wants to renegotiate the North American Free Trade Agreement and scrap it if he can't get the changes that he wants. So this presents a danger to Canada, a challenge. And the trick is to tur turn that challenge into opportunity by coming back to him with what I put forward as a pretty sweeping set of proposals um, to, to reorient the, uh, and renegotiate the entire accord on a bilateral basis to create greater economic uh, mobility, uh, security, um, and environmental accords. Let, let's stick with the Obama as president scenario. And Chris, your thoughts as to how that will, you know, change, uh, foster a better relationship between Canada and the U.S.? Well, I, I think that one of the challenges with Barack Obama is that I th he will come in facing a Democratic Congress and immediately, since he's never held an executive position before, have to figure out how to get the machinery of government going. Uh, there are 15 cabinet positions, all of whom have to go through Senate confirmation, six cabinet rank positions uh, associated with the presidency, including the drug czar and several others that have to come through. And then there are 3,302 political appointees who have to come through Senate confirmation. That takes a while to get not only find those people, but get them cleared and then get them through the Senate mm -hmm. so that they're ready to govern. I think the big challenge with Obama, especially with the kind of agenda that John's talking about, will be finding his feet so that he can respond to the kind of overtures he'll get from so many leaders around the world, not just Canada. Mm -hmm. if, if we look at McCain then as you know our other hypothetical, our only other hypothetical, uh, John, let me ask you what the possibilities are for a positive relationship with Canada? Oh, they're good. In fact, in some ways they're better than with Obama mm -hmm. because uh, John McCain knows Canada well. He has family living in Toronto. He came up to Ottawa, if you remember, in the summer. It was yep. quite a, unprecedented for a presidential nominee. Um, and uh, we, I think we could, we could count on, on very friendly bilateral relations. The danger is if McCain does become president, nonetheless, uh, it's inevitable that you're going to have a, increased Democratic majorities in both the House and the Senate. Democratic Congresses tend to be protectionist, and I suspect this Congress especially will be protectionist. So that's the challenge that Canada faces. Whoever is president, uh, we're going to have a Congress that, that has to be got around or convinced or, or constrained in some way. And, and that's not going anywhere. I mean, that's a given in, under either scenario. Um, Chris, for you, in the um, McCain as president scenario, your thoughts on a relationship between Canada and the U.S.? I agree with John, and I think that John McCain's uh, war on earmarks, which has been, you know, everyone focuses on the bridge to nowhere or the study of cow flatulence, but earmarks are also <laughs> the way in which Congress has funded border infrastructure. The Canada uh, U.S. bridge at Detroit Windsor or extra people for the border uh, out west by uh, Vancouver, Seattle. Once you start designating things for specific places, that's what an earmark comes to. So McCain's relationship with Congress will also be a problem, and many people say he would only serve one term. That could mean he'd be a lame duck from day one, making it difficult for him to get concessions out of Congress, difficult for him to be a partner for Canada on whatever the agenda item. So you're suggesting we could be ignored under a possible McCain administration. How would that change anything? Them... How would that change anything for us right now, do you think, though? <laughs> <laughs> well, and I don't mean I... to be cynical. <laughs> Uh, and I don't mean to be such an inside-the-beltway guy that I'm focused on all these minutiae of a transition for a presidency, but I do think that both candidates will be preoccupied with domestic affairs so much that it will be difficult for any of our international partners to have their expectations met. Mm. So Canada, early on, needs to make sure it gets uh, a listening ear from the president of the next uh, administration. John, is Stephen, is Stephen Harper the kind of guy to do that? To be, you know, the guy up front who says, yes, I want the ear of the president and I, and I want it now because we are, you know, your neighbors to the north and, and, and bigger than you when it comes to land mass? 
<laughs> Ideologically, yes. I think Harper believes strongly uh, in uh, continentalizing the economy and security arrangements. He's, he's a free trade kind of guy. And he's also quite pro-American. The problem is um, that doesn't play well in large portions like of Canada itself. I mean, there's an awful lot of um, political resistance uh, that, that, and a lot of political capital that you have to expend in order to get these things through. Nonetheless, he has to do it, just as Brian Mulroney did in the 80s, uh, exactly. decided, well, all right, I'm going to stake my prime ministership on this, and I'm going to go to the Americans with this proposal, and then try to sell it to Canada as well. Um, the, is he prepared to expend that kind of political capital? I don't know. And what, what are you going to be watching for from his, uh, you know, from the get-go, John, as you're in Washington right now, what will you be watching for from Canada in terms of overtures? Um, well, I think there'll probably be a new ambassador. It'll be interesting to see who that ambassador is. Um, and uh, I think Harper will try to get himself an invite down to Washington as mm -hmm. quickly as possible. I think Obama actually works for, for Harper better because um, there's, there is so much Canadian resistance, especially to Republican presidents, uh, but, there is, but Obama is so popular in Canada. It may, almost makes it easier for, for Harper to, to do something. But I agree with Chris. Unless Harper decides that he wants wants to do this, he, wa he wants to really completely rethink the border, says it out loud and says it often and gets himself to the Rose Garden and says <laughs> beside the American president, um, it will probably get lost in the noise. Chris, uh, John brought up a really good point, and that is of, you know, we should see who will become the ambassador, because the ambassador will really be the, the gateway to the president for Canada. How critical is that appointment uh, for us? Well, we, we've been very fortunate uh, in the last few years because we've sent ambassadors to Ottawa mm -hmm. from the United States who had good personal relationships with the president, mm -hmm. uh, whether it was Jim Blanchard, the Michigan governor, Gordon Giffen. Salucci. Uh, we had Paul Salucci yeah. and now David Wilkins. Just a, a set of guys who could pick up the phone and get their president on the phone to pay attention to Canada. It's not clear who in the circles of Obama or McCain would be on that short list. I think that's going to be a key pick. So, too, will be the uh, point of a secretary for Department of Homeland Security. We never had a transition with them before to a new presidency. They're a very tough department. They cause a lot of problems for Canada. Whoever gets that job is going to be key, not to mention uh, other jobs, uh, the USTR, the trade representative, some of the economic portfolios. But uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how this new administration takes shape. I don't think we know who the key people are just yet, mm -hmm. and that'll be something we'll only see after the election is over. And we're certainly waiting and counting down the days, I know, to, uh, well, less than two weeks now before Election Day. I want to thank you both, John Ibbotson and also Chris Sands, for taking the time to talk to us today. Been a pleasure. Sure, absolutely.